Hello, Dr. Chan. Hi, Lina. Okay, we know recently the COVID-19 vaccination is rolled out to the teenagers aged between 12 to 15. I have a 15 years old and a 17 years old boy. So how do I know it's safe for them? Right, so based on the recent clinical trial data that was done by the Pfizer BioNTech, the safety profile for teenagers 12 to 15 years old looks the same as in the adult population. Ah. And it looks as effective in this age group as well compared to the adult population. You know, I have a lot of friends, they are all parents as well so they have questions for you sure okay how safe is the vaccine for children with pre-existing conditions such as asthma obesity etc so children who have stable medical conditions like asthma and obesity are perfectly fine to go ahead and have the vaccine for children who have a weakened immune system either because of a medical condition that they have or medication that they are on for them it's fine to have the vaccine as well because it's not a live virus vaccine ah. Okay, this question. Are the newer strains of the virus more dangerous to children? The newer variants of concern are more transmissible to both adults as well as children. We don't really have enough evidence yet to know whether it will cause more severe illness in children. Then why the hurry to prioritise school-going children to get the vaccination? You know, school-going children, the adolescents uh, congregate, right? So they congregate in schools, they congregate in tuition centres, sports, CCAs, and one infected child with a more transmissible virus may then spread the virus to other children, and that can lead to a cluster or an outbreak. Even though most children only have mild disease compared to adults, there are children who have more severe disease, especially the younger babies, the teenagers and children who have underlying medical conditions. If you have a vaccinated child, that child has a lower risk of being infected and that protects all their close contacts, including household contacts who are elderly or can't be vaccinated. Will my child still get infected with COVID-19 after vaccination? So unfortunately, there is no vaccine that is going to be 100% protective. So they may still have infection, but the data shows us that the mRNA Pfizer vaccine is very effective in preventing symptomatic infection and severe infection. And that also means that the child will be less likely to onward transmit to other people. Are there any side effects or severe allergic reactions in children similar to adults? The most common is usually injection site pain, so where you have the injection in your arm. Yeah, 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 that's, more so for the second dose. That's right, definitely, but it's generally not very severe. There are side effects similar again to the adults, like feeling tired, having a headache, fever or muscle aches. And again, these are all mild and moderate and usually gets better on its own after a few days. Now, you can get severe allergic reactions, but those are very rare. In the Pfizer study, looking at adolescents receiving the vaccines, they did not see any adolescents who had severe allergic reactions. Interesting question we have here. Does the vaccine affect puberty and growth? Currently, there is no evidence to suggest that the vaccine will affect puberty or growth. Does the vaccine alter the DNA then? Well, no, the mRNA vaccine cannot alter the DNA. Our DNA is kept in the core of the cell. Now, the mRNA enters a part of our cell that doesn't go anywhere near where our DNA is. So there's no way the mRNA interacts with our DNA or alter our DNA or have anything to do with our DNA at all. Okay. Oh, great to hear that. Right, if my kid has severe allergic reactions such as anaphylaxis towards food, so would you recommend that he or she receive the vaccination? So children who have an allergic reaction or anaphylaxis to things that are not vaccines, so for example food, medication, dust or other triggers, are all fine to receive the vaccine. The children who have already had an allergic reaction to the first dose of an mRNA vaccine should not have the second dose. Or if you've had a severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis to other vaccines, then you should see your doctor to discuss it with them first to determine whether you can have the vaccine. If there are parents who still feel very uncertain or uncomfortable, should we wait? Well, I guess the question is, what are they waiting for, right? So in the context of a pandemic, where many countries around the world are going through second waves and third waves, and we're seeing variants that are more transmissible, and for all we know may evolve to cause more severe disease later, then the decision to make is whether you want to take that risk of waiting versus protecting yourself right now when there is so much infection in the pandemic. Mm. At the end of the day, it is something to consider in terms of trying to protect yourself as best as possible when you can now. 
Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Dr. Chen. Thank you. Happy to be here. For more information, you may refer to this website. Okay, so um, I believe there's more.